Amanda, can you tell us more about the challenges and solutions to rebranding a global brand? Yes, absolutely. I think one of the biggest challenges is making sure that the brand is sponsored by the board right from the start. So you need your CEO behind it. Um, you need a board level representation mm -hmm. and then you need to think about the brand that you're actually going to become. So if you don't have a brand, for example, then you need to think about how the brand will be portrayed. Mm -hmm. The brands now um, need to be digitally savvy, so which means that they need to represent, go across all media, not just obviously TV, but now they need to work across all media. You'll see a lot of brands these days, such as Apple, who simplified their brand and actually mm -hmm. simplifying their typeface. So brands today have to work on a much smaller screen, they have to work on mobile, they have to work on apps. Mm -hmm. So digitally, a brand needs to work much harder. Mm -hmm. I think, um, in terms of the, the challenge people forget about internally that you need to rebrand internally. So culturally, people need to be behind the brand. So they need to be really positive brand ambassadors. So before you launch externally, your internal people need to be behind your brand. Um, I think also getting your strategy right. So for example, um, do you go for a big bang approach? Do you transform overnight and launch a new brand? It's expensive, but it is dramatic. Mm -hmm. Your spontaneous brand awareness, of course, is going to go through the roof, but it also has a high risk. So if you've got systems um, in place, you have to really trust that the systems are going to work. And of course, from a customer experience point of view, you have to trust that, that those customer experience mm -hmm. pieces are going to work first time because you won't get a second chance to launch. Yeah. Whereas a transitional strategy is longer, um, but also has the benefit of taking all the credibility of the old brand with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and finally, really just to say that um, when you are rebranding, you know, don't just have changed the logo. So I would say that it should be a symbol of change, not a change of symbol. So don't mm -hmm. just change your logo. Make sure that your, your brand is doing something different than before. Your proposition mm -hmm. should be better and different. So look through your whole organization and think about how can we do things differently? What will this new brand represent? And, and how can we do things better? And what will the customer notice mm -hmm. as a result? Otherwise, customers will expose you very, very quickly if, you, if your brand is exactly the same. It's just mm -hmm. a, it's a different color, for example. Right. Yeah. yeah. We had an interesting discussion yesterday, too, where I guess the, the importance of uh, an authenticity and also connecting the brand to how is it making people's lives mm -hmm. easier uh, was just seen as a increasingly important. Um, have you dealt with those issues? The, 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 what does the brand do to, uh, to help people to, to improve people's lives? Absolutely. I think um, O2 is a great demonstrator of that. And if we, every proposition we launch, it has to do something, um, bring mm -hmm. a benefit to the customer. So the customer is always at the heart of everything that we do. And we need to make sure that anything we launch is specifically bringing real value to the customer. Mm -hmm. So whether it's uh, priority moments is a good example of that. So customers can um, access um, gigs and tickets to mm -hmm. um, the O2 or O2 Academy oh, 48 yes. hours before anyone else can is a good example mm -hmm. of a proposition that's simply just to do you know, um, great things for our customers. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great example of how, how there is a reward, too, of being part of the uh, O2 brand. There's a direct. Now, um, you have particular experience in, uh, in the Czech Republic. Um, do you mind sharing with us some of your experiences, what it takes, uh, what one must know about uh, succeeding uh, in the Czech Republic? Well, we did a, a very big rebrand. So it was the largest rebrand in the Czech Republic. It was a, a massive transformation. And we had the, uh, I, I think, the, the challenge of integrating Eurotel, uh, Chesky Telecom, who was the incumbent operator, O2 and Telefonica. Oh. So the brand became O2. Internally, um, the parent brand was O2, uh, Telefonica. Uh -huh. So the, the issue for us was we needed to make sure that the parent, everyone understood the parent brand was Telefonica. Mm -hmm. The commercial brand was O2. And we need to deliver a seamless experience as well as integrating um, two billing systems, mm -hmm. all the customer back end, and making sure that we go to market with a single mm -hmm. proposition. The big challenge for us is first of all, integrating two teams, bringing them together. So those people on the launch team uh, were representing both um, Eurotel and Chesky Telecom people. Mm -hmm. We very quickly talked to people and said to them, right, you're O2 people already. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's what you are. You're OT people already. We haven't launched the brand, but you're O2 already. So start thinking as O2 people. And that really freed people up to do new and exciting things. Mm -hmm. And we gave people the license to say, right, now you're in charge of the company. What do you want to do? What do you mm -hmm. want to do with the brand? How do you want to, how do you want their brand to think, behave, and act? What are all the things, the grumbles that you've had before in from a customer experience point of view that you want to do that's better? You know, from your retail, um, from your um, online, from your um, customer experience, staff, mm -hmm. what, what should we do that's different? And what propositions would be really exciting if we launched them? So the, the big thing for us, we went through, um, we went through, we thought, how can we make a critical difference in every single area of the operation? Mm -hmm. So when we launched, we were confident that the, the, you know, the brand felt genuinely new, fresh and different, mm -hmm. and the experience of the customers would be better, mm -hmm. significantly better. Mm -hmm. And we spent a long time making sure that um, every area of the business was significantly better. That sounds well. like a, an exciting uh, uh, exercise in creativity. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and I think the most, the biggest challenge is also getting your systems right and mm -hmm. being, being confident they're going to work from day one. So um, earlier I spoke a little bit about the fact that, you know, you've got your dramatic big bang and transition overnight. We did that. Yeah. So um, there is a, the moment where you're holding your breath that everything's mm -hmm. going to work. Yes. yes. So, you know, shops are being repainted. Uh, I was going to say, there must have been also the consolidation deciding... Uh, which shops to close because there were too many, there were some too close together to justify co uh, continued existence. But yeah, the simple physical uh, re redecoration, uh, the rebranding of the actual store. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, not to mention thousands of phone boxes. So we had phone boxes in the Czech Republic. Oh. So we had thousands of phone boxes. Um, we had thousands of cars we needed to rebrand. So logistically, I mean, it's quite exciting the first moment you see an O2 car driving around the Czech Republic. I think I did that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, did, and kind of looking at historically, you know, what was before these um, multiple brands uh, on their own, now a consolidated new brand, uh, Telefonica slash O2. How, um, how are you doing in the market there? Uh, when you look at how much market share this, that these uh, pieces have before versus mm -hmm. this new exciting uh, O2 brand. I think in terms of the brand, it's, it's certainly made a difference between uh, you know, before and after. It's a much stronger brand. The customer experience is better. Mm -hmm. um, certainly improvements um, right away across the board. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you would have read in the press that um, Telefonica sold uh, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, which we rebranded at a similar six months later mm -hmm. um, to the PPF group. So oh, now we license I the O2 see. brand. So we have a very good relationship with PPF where we support um, their initiatives now mm -hmm. to, um, to, do, to do branding, yeah. um, launch product innovations, because of course it's still, it's still our brand and we want it to be really successful. So we yeah. operate um, very much in the same mode from mm -hmm. a brand point of view and yeah. how we support the, t the local team. Yeah, oh, fascinating. Well, thanks very much for sharing that information and uh, good luck with uh, uh, continuing doing that kind of interesting work. Maybe Thank we you. can uh, get an update from you in a year or two looks like you're doing some yeah really fascinating and uh, interesting to know about uh, projects there. Thank you. I think the, the biggest project that we've got going on at the moment is the integration of in Germany between O2 and E+. So I'll keep you posted oh, on that. Yes, yes, that's of par particular interest uh, to me. I've also been watching as I visit the UK the um, the rebranding of I guess the EE mm -hmm. Uh, which must looks quite a challenge too of combining uh, T-Mobile and is it or, orange? orange? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you're doing the same. You're getting to do the same thing in in Germany, right? Yep. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you.